think back on these times and the dreams we left behind i'll be glad because i was blessed to get to have you in my life when i look back on these days i'll look and see your face you were right there for me Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. But whosoever lives and believes in me shall not die eternally.
we are met together today in these very strange times to say our last farewells and to pay our last respects in this life to Margaret Hamer and Doreen Marsh. And I am so sorry that we have to meet like this. You have to wear masks. There is a dispensation that I don't have to, at least during talking. I hope that uh, whenever this is at an end, please God may it be soon, we shall be able to meet again at um, St George's, which was so uh, dear certainly to Doreen and precious to Margaret too, I think, um, to say a fitting farewell um, with everybody who would want to be there, able to be there. In these strange times, we're not permitted to sing, or at least we're advised not to sing, and so we're going to sit and listen and perhaps follow the words um, of the hymn, Abide With Me.
we are here, at least in part, to say thank you to God for Margaret and Dorian's lives. And to help us in that process of saying thank you for these two remarkable ladies, um, there are some family reflections from Richard. I first met this young lady when we both joined a dancing class in Washington Heath. I have to say I was more interested in my partner than the dance steps. However, we persevered and continued to dance until we were able to cope with the exercise. We managed to collect a few medals along the way as well. I quickly learned that her family were bombed out during the Blitz. She was a Birmingham City football fan from when the cost of a match ticket was about a shilling. She started work at 6am on Saturday at Bragg's Bakery, making donuts. Life moved on, my apprenticeship finished and we got married in May 1956, followed by my national service in September 1956 then had visits at various depots from a wife who was making sure I was coping with my lifestyle. A new addition to the family came along, our daughter Jackie. In those days, if mum-to-be was in labour, at visiting time you were told to come back tomorrow, and they just got on with it. Margaret was then a wife and mother, which she was very good at. Apart from the day, she arrived home from shopping and found she'd left the pram and baby outside the last shop she visited. Things then went on as they do. Our daughter growing up through to school and then getting married to Keith. Margaret then thought that her mum could do with a bit of care and attention and she came to live with us. Her home was bought and adapted to suit her requirements. Next, she suggested the same could be done for my mum. So again, the next house was acquired and adjusted accordingly. Eventually, life changed completely. Son-in-law Keith obtained a position in the United States of America for three years. They are still there after 27 years. Margaret then embarked on over 30 visits to see how they were coping all this time, including how our granddaughter Robin was doing with her education. Everything was satisfactory. Visits to Salt Lake City, the Grand Canyon, and Yellowstone Park, etc., were also included on these trips. The last trip was for our granddaughter's wedding to Michael, not to be missed at any price. One other occasion was for our 60th wedding anniversary, which was topped by receipt of a card from the Queen that arrived on the day at 11am, having travelled all the way from the UK. All in all, she had a busy life, and I hope she enjoyed it. One thing is certain, I and many others will miss her immensely. Thank you, Richard. And the second is from Jackie, Robin, and Keith. Mom, Margaret, and Nanny, you were such a kind, loving, talented, and very funny lady. You took such good care of us and loved to cook, sew, knit, play games, and dance especially blind dance. Mom, thank you for doing so much for me. You gave me unconditional love, always supporting and helping me in so many ways. We laughed together a lot, and I was lucky to do so many things with you. I remember the two of us going to Buckingham Palace to the Duke of Edinburgh's award presentation. And I'm sure that some of you here today will not be at all surprised to hear that, of course, we were late. <laughs> but thankfully, they still let us in. We drove our land yacht on the beach, went much too fast, tipped it over, and fell off. On our trip out west, 
and climbed up into a covered wagon and took a ride into the hills to a barbecue and Wild West show. We sat on the edge of an inflatable boat to take a ride down the Snake River in Colorado, looking out for all the bald eagles. And on our trip to the Grand Canyon, the wind was so strong nor nearly to you over the edge. Unbeknownst to some, you were quite an adventure. I'm thankful for what for the many wonderful memories we made, and will miss being able to make new ones with you. And then, Margaret, you and I had a lot of fun together, and every time I teased and played you up, which was many times, you took it well always had a quick and very witty colour. Your wicked sense of humour always had me laughing and looking forward to our next time together. Thank you for being the wonderful person you were. I couldn't have asked for a more loving and accepting of you. And again, now, you were so very patient, creative and loving. Thank you for spending countless hours with me playing dollies, baking cookies, building gingerbread houses at Christmas time, and so many other things that I've asked you to do. You were such a constant in my life that I can't think of a single time you were not there supporting me one way or another. I especially remember you being at my track meets, freezing in the cold rain still happily cheering me on. I am so very thankful for all the time we got to spend together. Mom, Margaret and Nanny, we loved you so very much, still do, and always will. You will be remembered and missed more than you could ever know. Now it's your time to soar above the clouds. Good night. Sleep. Thank you for those reminiscences. Now, a tribute to Dawn.
my sister. Tis a wish of mine. Now that our morning meal is done, make haste, your morning task resign. Come forth and feel the sun. And from the blessed power that rolls about, below, above, will frame the measure of our souls. They shall be turned to love. Then come, my sister, come, I pray. With speed, put on your woodland dress and bring no book. For this one day, we will give to idols. This is a tribute to our beautiful mother, Gran and Granny Do, whose dimple smile would light up a room. Mom was born in Tamworth in 1932. The family moved to Allen Rock when her father became a blacksmith for Birmingham Corporation, as it was then known. During the war, the house suffered a direct hit in a bombing raid. Mom, Auntie Margaret, and their parents were buried in the shelter. Thankfully, for us all here, they, they were unharmed. They were then evacuated back to Tamworth, but returned to Allen Rock when the house was rebuilt after the war. Younger sister Janet had been born by then. Mom's education suffered during her childhood but she showed throughout her life a real intelligence and interest in the world. Who knows what she could have done had things been different. Mom left school and worked at Bragg's, Bragg's Bakery in Allen Rock. But we don't have a record if she was making donuts or not. She was courted by our father Len, whose brother had married Mom's cousin Kathleen. They were married in 1950 and as Dad was stationed at Castle Bromwich Aerodrome and housing was in short supply, they purchased a caravan and parked it in a farmer's field at Fox Hollies Road, Warmley. I came along, followed four years later by Anne. How Mum coped with two children in a tiny caravan, we will never know. Photographs seem to show it as idyllic, but I am quite sure it was anything but. Dad was hoping to have a house built for us, but eventually it became obvious that something had to change. And they took up an offer of a brand new council house in Minworth, and it was here that Wendy was born. Once Wendy started school, Mom took a job as a cook's assistant at Minworth School, working there until she started to have back problems. She also worked in the village shop. These jobs ensured we children were lucky enough to go on foreign trips. I went skiing and went on a Mediterranean cruise and Wendy on an exchange trip to America uh, with the girl guides. As money was easier, we had our first family foreign holiday, which was a train journey through Switzerland. I gained my private pilot's license and took her flying. She was not afraid at all. She loved it. She and Dad also flew to, flew to Kuwait at this time when I was working there, and they loved the experience. Mom supported us in our chosen careers, Wendy in nursing and in jury design for me in electrical engineering. Weddings and grandchildren followed. She was a willing babysitter, always on call when needed. 
There was also great suddenness during this period when Jason and her younger sister Janet passed away far, far too early. After Dad passed away, she found spiritual comfort at Minvus Church, making many new friends, and this is where she met Jim. After their marriage, with a new lease of life, meant she spent part of the year in Spain, and they travelled to France, Austria, and many trips round England. After Jim passed away, Mom went with Auntie Margaret on holiday to America, where they had a wonderful time staying with Jackie and joining in the Halloween activities there. When she returned, she organised a trip for her and Laura to visit Australia, another adventure. She would spend time, she would spend Christmas and Easter with Wendy, George and the girls in Brill and would recount the fun of the red rolling there. Eventually she started to slow down and move to Calder Drive where she made yet another more friends and lived with the help of Anne until a severe stroke meant she was unable to live unassisted and moved to a care home. We will remember a vibrant lady with love. We will miss you, Mother.
reading from St. John's Gospel. Here St. John records for us how it was that Jesus first spoke to his friends, the disciples, about his coming death and how he sought to comfort them in the feelings of sorrow and loss that they were to experience. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me. So that where I am, you may be too. You know to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you go, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. I hope that in the sadness of today, which cannot be reduced by these strange circumstances and particular precautions in the face of a pandemic, you will take some comfort away with you from this service, and especially from that reading, which I think does two things. It lets us know that it's all right for us to mourn. If Jesus' disciples could feel like that when confronted with the reality of the death of their friend Jesus, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. We should give ourselves room to mourn, room to come to terms with our loss, room to work through our sadness. And the second comfort comes from the promise which Jesus made to Thomas and his friends when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. My understanding is that these two sisters in their different ways strove to live a good life, strove to live thankful lives. The photographs on the front of the order of service and on the picture um, behind their coffins shows two people whose faces are filled with smiles, two people who lived truly thankful lives, two, two people who went out of their way to bring happiness and warmth to the lives of others. I knew Doreen much better than Margaret. I know that Doreen was immensely proud of her children and grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Whenever I went to see her, they were always prominent in photographs at home and at Fairwood Court. I know from things that Doreen told me that Margaret felt just the same about her brood. I do wish I could tell you that the hope that we may feel as Christians was likely to make your sadness evaporate and disappear. But we're going to miss the people we love if they're away from us. We will have missed them as they became more and more diminished by the advancing years. We should miss them if they've gone to be with God in the same way that we would miss them if they'd gone to live in another part of the world. So as we come in a few moments to our time of prayer, let us remember everything about Margaret and Dorby that was special. Everything about them that cannot be replaced. Every memory that you will cherish for the rest of your lives. So we begin our prayers and we pray with the company of heaven the congregation here, or those who are joining us through technology across the Atlantic, as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we thank you that men and women are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We 
thank you for the life of your daughters, Doreen and Margaret, for the love and mercy they received from you and showed so amply among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time we may share with Doreen and Margaret that clear vision when we shall see your face in the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those near and far who will feel acutely the sadness of this day, and for all who will. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, we pray, with those who will. Casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for God's grace in our own lives. Grant us, Lord, the wisdom and the grace to use aright whatever time may be left to us here on earth. Lead us to be so sorry for our sins that we turn away from them, the evil we have done and the good we have not done. And strengthen us to follow the steps of your Son in the way that leads to the fullness of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if you're able easily to stand, will you please stand for the prayers of condemnation? My brothers and sisters, dear friends, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection, which knit us as one throughout our lives, do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives us, so let us pray, asking God to gather Margaret and Dory to Himself. O oh, merciful Father, we commend the soul of this, our sister Doreen, into your hands. We are strengthened by the sure hope that she, together with all who have died in Christ, will rise again with Christ upon the last day. We thank you for all the blessings with which you endowed this handmaid of yours in her life on earth. They are for us, too, a token of your love and of the blessed union of the saints in Christ. Listen then, Lord, in your mercy to our prayers, that the gates of paradise may be opened to your handmaid, and that we who are left may console one another with words of faith, until we all meet in Christ, and are with you and our sister Dory eternally. All merciful Father, we commend the soul of this, our sister Margaret, into your hands. We are strengthened by the sure hope that she, together with all who have died in Christ, will rise again with Christ upon the last day. We thank you for all the blessings with which you endowed this handmaid of yours in her life on earth. They are for us, too, a token of your love and of the blessed union of the saints in Christ. Listen then, Lord, in your mercy to our prayers, that the gates of paradise may be opened to your handmaid, and that we who are left may console one another with words of faith, until we all meet in Christ, and are with you and our sister Margaret eternally. We have entrusted our sisters to God's merciful keeping, and we now commit them to be cremated in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. For our Lord Jesus Christ, who died, was buried, and rose again for us, to him be glory for ever and ever. Amen. The angels lead them into paradise. The martyrs welcome them as they draw near, and lead them into Jerusalem, the heavenly city. Our angels welcome, and where Lazarus is poor no longer, there may they have eternal rest. Amen. And uh, we 
you please sit for a short prayer of this. Prayer from the 4th century written by Bishop St. Augustine of Hippo, which seems particularly pertinent at this time. Watch thou, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend your sick ones, O Lord Christ, rest your weary ones, bless your dying ones, soothe your suffering ones, pity your afflicted ones, and all for your love's sake. Amen. May our Blessed Lady, St. George, St. John, St. Cuthbert, and all the saints pray for you. May the holy angels and archangels watch over you. May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the love and mercy of God, rest in peace. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.